Hey guys, this is Rudy coming to you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Friday. It is November the 18th. The markets are closed for the uh, for the week. If you're in energy stocks, you probably took a little bit of a hit. In days gone by, I used to say one Maserati, two Maserati, etc. But uh, nowadays, um, if you're in energy, you're up quite handsomely. So you're probably not taking those uh, one Maserati hits at a time like we did before. Um, what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to... Uh, talk a little bit about some small cap energy stocks. In fact, this is gonna be your top 15 picks as chosen by you, um, not necessarily chosen by you in any particular order, but certainly uh, stocks that you mentioned to me as we uh, chatted about the uh, most recent videos that I made and uh, as some of them related to some of the Canadian stocks, um, just by, by way of, uh, the, um, the fact that most of the comments came from people who are invested in small cap Canadian stocks. Many of the stocks in the top 15, uh, these small cap stocks are Canadian stocks. Uh, if they're Canadian energy stocks, the chances are pretty good they're from Alberta, uh, which is one of the um, resource rich, uh, probably one of the richest resource, uh, resource geographical locations for energy and gas, uh, energy and petroleum, energy and production uh, in the world. Um, taking a look here at sort of what's going on in, in uh, Canada, and I have a 10 year period from 2012 to, to uh, 2022, Western Canada Select, uh, which is the type of uh, uh, product that they are producing out of Alberta, almost sells, always sells at a discount to WTI because not all refineries are capable of handling it. Now, I don't know too much about Western Canada Select, uh, I do know a little bit about Canadian energy companies, but I don't know too much about the commodity. So I looked it up. It says it's generally seen to be of lower quality. It's not me that's saying this, guys. This is uh, just me doing a little bit of research because of its high sulfur content, uh, which makes it a sour blend compared to WTI, which is supposedly sweet. Now, I'm pretty sure that it has nothing to do with taste and more to do with um, the quality and the uh, sulfur content of the uh, oil that they are producing. But you can see over the last 10 years, the uh, traje proje uh, trajectory of the uh, graphs when you compare WTI to uh, WCS has been pretty constant. And uh, as of September, so a couple of months ago, the difference was about 20 bucks between the two. So um, in place number one, so I, I said I had 15 and this is gonna be slightly repetitive. So I'm gonna go uh, a little faster as I go along, uh, because many of the things I'm highlighting for you are gonna be sort of the same slide to slide. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna screw up many of these names because I don't speak French and some of these names look uh, sort of a little bit French to me. Uh, Periade, Periade, Energy Limited, how am I doing there? It's OTC, so it's over the counter. You can buy it for a dollar a share. It's a $166 million, $66 million company. It's got a PE ratio of 6.3, which means profitable. And that PE ratio is quite attractive. And it's sitting sort of uh, in the middle of that 52 week range, just slightly right of center between 10 cents and $1.70. If you bought it at 10 cents, you uh, have done exceptionally well because you've uh, got a 10X here. Um, and if you bought it at buck 70, you're probably hoping it's gonna bounce back. So this was one of the recommendations from Thor who actually mentioned quite a few of them. The next one is also from Thor. And this one is called Prairie Provident. And I'm pretty sure you probably say it as you do in English, Prairie Provident Resources. OTC again, over the counter, Canadian, 16 cents a share. Uh, is this a guy? Uh, uh, <laughs> is this a buy, guys? Maybe you should tell me. Market cap, $20 million, small company, positive earnings. So uh, PE ratio of uh, less than five, pretty good. Also sort of sitting in the middle of its 52-week range between a half a penny and 27 cents. You know, So uh, some of these small cap uh, stocks are the um, stuff of legend in terms of people who uh, have generated 10x, 20x, 30x on a particular uh, uh, equity investment. Of course, the reverse is also true. Some of the people have just lost their shirts and country companies gone bankrupt and they lost all their money. How about this one, Petrocap? I'm still with Thor. So this particular one here, uh, we have a 53 cent stock. By the way, all my prices are in US dollars. So um, when it says OTC, obviously you can buy these things on the uh, Canadian exchange if you have a Canadian account, I do. So if I had to buy something like Petro Tower, I would actually purchase it in Canada rather than buying it over the counter uh, with uh, all the uh, negatives attached to that in terms of uh, volume and liquidity and stuff like that. Uh, the market cap 455 million, so it's a little bit larger. 
uh, positive earnings, PE ratio only three, super cheap. Uh, we can see um, uh, again, you know, sort of sitting just right of center on its 52 week range between 20 cents and 78 cents. Is it a buy? I don't know. Um, I'm, uh, what I'm going to try to do is maybe uh, sort of get down to uh, three or five of them and, and then do a little bit of a deeper dive and see what they look like. So that was number three. How about number four, white cap? So I covered this one in a previous video. So I'm not going to spend too much time here either. Uh, this one you can actually, um, it's also Canadian, you can buy it over the counter. You can buy it for $8 a share. It's much larger. It's a $5 billion company. And uh, it's PE ratio 4.27. So uh, pretty attractively priced as well. The 52-week uh, range just right of center. And this one was recommended to us by Tony G. Moving on, Meg. So this one I can't attribute to any one particular person. This is number five. Meg Energy was actually uh, recommended or asked about by quite a number of people. So I spoke briefly about it in a previous video. So this is one that uh, is now coming up for the second time. So I may want to spend a little bit of time exploring Meg, which you can buy for $14. Uh, again, you have to buy OTC. If you're buying it in the United States, if you're buying it on the Grand Stock Exchange, you can buy Meg. Uh, market cap 4.2 billion, so also slightly larger. PE ratio of six and a half, so it's attractively priced. We can see now there's institutional holdings at almost 34%. And uh, again, just right of center in terms of its 52 week range. Is it a buy? I don't know. How about this one? Yangara. So this one was uh, recommended by A Anonymous. And uh, this one, once again, a Canadian stock, you can buy for $2 per share over the counter in the US. Market cap, $187 billion, uh, million, so a small company, positive earnings, 2.63. PE ratio is very attractive, uh, sitting almost smack bang center in, in, in the middle of its 52 week range, which was between one and $3. As I said, you can buy it for two bucks and was recommended by a anonymous. So Yangara looks really interesting to me. Small $187 million market cap, but a 2.6 PE ratio, very, very attractively priced. A anonymous, pause is required, right? Uh, also recommended Obsidian, and hopefully I'm saying that one correct also. Small cap, based in Canada, $7.68 per share, $632 million market cap. So um, small, but not that small. Uh, positive earnings, 4.3 uh, PE ratio. Smack bang in the middle once again, between $3 and $12. And the current stock price is $7. By the way, on the right-hand side, you'll see I have a graph. The black line would be the stock I'm talking about. And the two uh, little lines at the bottom, the light blue line is the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And the uh, purplish line is the S&P 500. And you can see... Almost every single stock I'm mentioning outperformed the indices quite handsomely, quite comfortably. Coming in at number eight, again, this one I can't attribute to any one particular person because many people mentioned Vermillion to me. Uh, this is a mid-cap blend based in Canada once again. Uh, in this particular instance, I can actually buy it on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker symbol VET, $3.2 billion company. So now we uh, moved away from the uh, tiny little ones. PE ratio 3.4, very attractively priced, 30% held by institutions. And also smack bang, what is it with these Canadian stocks? They're all sitting right in the middle of their 52 week range. Hopefully you didn't buy them at the highs uh, and you bought them at the lows because um, if you bought them at the lows, you're up you know, 2X, 3X. If you bought them at the high, you have to wait for them to bounce back. Coming in at number nine, this one's actually based in Argentina. A couple of people have mentioned this. The last one person to mention it to me was El Alquimista. I hope I'm saying that correctly too. He says, going with YPF, I'm loading. So this one you can buy at $7.38. And uh, here, because it's based in Argentina, uh, I can buy it on the New York Stock Exchange YPF, but I have to pay ADR fees. So ADR is an American depository receipt. So I'm not buying the actual shares. I'm buying the uh, note, the ADR uh, sort of token, uh, notional value of the share, which usually is about one to one. So if the price of the stock is at $7.38, usually, but not always, the ADR that I'm buying is also at $7.38. Uh, market cap, $3 billion, so not that small. Uh, PE ratio of only two. So this is extremely attractively priced. Uh, however, it's sitting sort of towards the high side of its 52 week range. So I'm not sure if it's going to pull back uh, a little from where it is now. Uh, so I don't know right now if this is a good entry point, but it certainly looks like a very attractive stock. 49% held by institutions. And I believe, uh, and I can be corrected on this one because I'm not sure the uh, government of Argentina is a uh, shareholder in the company, or at least has a lot of influence, not dissimilar to Petrobras in Brazil. John Hibbs asked me about uh, Nine Energy. He said, what do you think of Nine Energy? Well, the fact of the matter is, John, 
I had not heard of Nine Energy before you mentioned it right now. Nine Energy, once again, a small cap stock. I can buy it on the NYSE, ticker symbol nine, uh, 10 bucks a share, $342 million market cap, not too bad. Negative earnings here. It's uh, quite unusual for uh, uh, an oil and gas company, especially one that's doing several million dollars in revenue to have negative earnings at this time. So uh, one would certainly want to spend a little bit of time doing due diligence and find out why the earnings are negative. Anyway, this comes in at number 10. It's right at its all-time, uh, not all-time, but 52-week high. And maybe I don't want to buy it when it's at its 52-week high, uh, unless there's a compelling reason for me to believe uh, once I've done my due diligence that this thing is going to take off and fly and uh, where it is right now, $10.30 is actually just the beginning of a new bullish cycle. I don't know that, so I can't say that. Uh, and for that reason, you need to do some due diligence too before you make an investment into nine energy services coming in at number 10, which is 52% held by institutions. The Larson family commented here, he said, I don't invest in OTC markets, especially the pink sheets. So I'll say for Devon Energy, there's a double top at 76, $77, stable 6.5% dividend, but don't, expect, uh, but don't expect capital gains. However, if you want capital gains, go for SD. SD is Sand Ridge Energy. I covered this one in a previous video as well. Ticker symbol SD on the New York Stock Exchange. You can buy it for 20 bucks. The uh, company has a market cap of $727 million. So it's getting close to a billion. Um, we have a 4.3, very attractively priced PE ratio. It's sitting smack bang once again. What is it with all these stocks? Right in the middle of its 52 week range, it's 66% held by institutions. So um, for people like me, uh, from a contrarian point of view, uh, you're probably getting it a little bit late when the institutional investment is that high. But you know uh, that doesn't mean it's bad or anything like that. You just need to do a bit of homework. Coming in at number 12, so nearly done. Valco, I'm sure it's Valco. Valco Energy, maybe, I don't know. On the NYSE, I can buy this one, EGY. Bad Vision says, uh, take a look at EGY and SD. Of course, I just talked about SD a minute ago. You can buy Valcove, Valco Energy for $5.34. It's a $600 million company. It's got a 4.6 uh, PE ratio. It's pretty good. It's held by institutions 30%, and it's uh, left of center uh, in its 52 week range. So um, this one might be very attractively priced and really, really interesting. So I'm going to make a note of number 12, Valco Energy. It might be one of the uh, sort of top five that I want to investigate a little bit further. Uh, and do a little bit of a deeper dive with. So uh, I've already kind of made a mental note of three of them. I'll go through them again and maybe pick my sort of top five and see how it compares with yours. Coming in at number 13 is Surge Energy. Again, it's an OTC. It's a Canadian company. You can buy it for $7. This one was recommended by Ere Shapira. And he was saying, you uh, he's suggesting these particular two stocks. One of them is SGY. Um, so for uh, Canadians, this would be SGY on the Toronto Stock Exchange, TSX. And for uh, US buyers, it would be ZPTAF, uh, OTC. $563 million market cap. This one's got a PE ratio of four and a half, which is really cheap. And at the same time, it even pays a dividend of 31 cents, which currently yields 4.65% at the current stock price, which is $6.71. Also, this left of center in terms of its 52 week low and high. Coming in at number 14, so one more to go after this one, Crew Energy, also from Ares. So this was the other one. He said, look at SGY. The other one is CR. So once again, you can buy CR on the Toronto Stock Exchange, Crew Energy, or otherwise you can buy it over the counter, CWEGF. $4.56 is your purchase price right now. It's a $715 million market cap company. It's got a PE of only 3.82, it's very attractively priced. Uh, remember, sometimes they're attractively priced for the wrong reasons. Sometimes they're attractively priced for the right reasons. So you certainly do a little bit of a deeper dive. You want to look at a couple of things, like, for instance, the current ratio, the quick ratio, um, not only the PE ratio. You also want to look at their debt, the debt obligations, the time frame of that debt, uh, the debt compared to uh, the market cap, the uh, revenue sales compared to the market cap, so price to book, all that kind of stuff. You, you need to look at all of it, right? So you do a proper valuation summary. And I'm happy to do some of these if we pick uh, sort of let's say a top five, uh, because I can't do it for 15 stocks. It's just too many. Um, it's trading a little high. So it's $4.56 and it's 52 week high is $5.39. So maybe SGY, the previous one is a better one to get into right now than CR, but uh, who knows, right? Uh, because we need to uh, kind of figure out where it's going. All the graphs look great. So our last one here coming in, number 15, 
And by the way, they in no particular order. This is the last one that you uh, guys mentioned to me, Tamarack Valley Energy. So uh, once again, we have a Canadian small cap here. Uh, for me, it would be an OTC by T-N-E-Y-F. Uh, and then this one was recommended by JRGG uh, a couple of hours ago, uh, almost a day ago. $2.1 billion market cap, PE ratio of only five, and uh, quite attractively priced at three bucks seventy-five, sitting just left of center in terms of its 52-week range. So uh, there's sort of a top 15 small cap energy stocks. I picked up on this uh, news report um, today, and uh, this was actually published yesterday by Petroleum Economist. I don't know the source, so I don't know how reliable it is. It's the first time I've ever read an article from Petroleum Economist. It was written, written by Vincent Lauerman from Calgary, which is obviously right there where the oil sands patch is. Uh, and these little header here under the picture says, Total Energy plans to spin off all its Canadian oil sands assets and related midstream and trading businesses. Uh, this was written just yesterday, so November 17th. He says the exodus from Canada's oil sand continues. Now, sort of at a macro level, you want to be familiar with uh, what's going on in general. So it's not just the price of the commodity, but there also seems to be some kind of an exodus. I can't really speak to that because I don't have any knowledge of standing in that regard. So I can, can sort of uh, highlight some uh, educational content for you in terms of what you should be looking at or not. Um, but I see these reports and it's something we want to be familiar with is these companies are still fleeing the carbon heavy assets, despite the industries committing the industry committing to net zero emissions by 2050, uh, as of course many other people have done as well. So that's kind of a, a, an overview of the um, sort of top 15 small cap energy stocks that uh, uh, are sort of flagged or on your watch list or tagged as buys or potential buys by a variety of different people on our channel. Uh, thank you for sharing that content and uh, for giving me some, uh, some homework to do. <laughs> Uh, so what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is uh, during the course of the next few days or whatever, I will um, compile a, a top five. And if you guys can help me with that, because if you long in some of these positions and you have a compelling reason as to why you hold them, that you can share with us, that'd be great because it will uh, lift my load just a little bit. And um, we get to, let's say, a top five, and then we uh, compare them from a technical point of view and a valuations point of view, and maybe pick one or two winners where uh, you can park some cash and uh, maybe make some money and generate some positive returns for your portfolio. So uh, guys, that's it on the uh, 15 small caps. And uh, as I said, a whole basket of Canadian ones. So uh, on that note, this is Mr. Roxy saying thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.